Hey finders and welcome back to Fortune Finds. Today I'm going to be reviewing the LA Colors Radical Glow which comes with an array of products. So I tried, tested these out. I have a lot to say about each and every product. It comes in this super pretty box. Like look at how beautiful this makeup is on this model. Oh my god. This comes with a bunch of different products. Inside you get an eyeshadow palette. Oh, I have it right here. Let me just show you. Inside, hello, you get this eyeshadow palette, a blush, a blush brush, nail polish, a lipstick, an eyeliner, a mascara, a liner pencil sharpener, a liner sharpener, a pencil sharpener, and a blush brush that I did not use. So you get quite a lot of stuff. The only things that I didn't use in this tutorial, the nail polish, as well as the blush brush and the sharpener. I just wanna give a nice shout out and thank you to my aunt because she bought this for me for Christmas because she figured I would wanna do a YouTube video about it. So here I am, Mike and I are going out to date night tonight and this is my makeup. Honestly, right off the bat, I feel like this is a great little bundle and like when my aunt gave this to me i could tell she like wasn't really sure if i was going to be into it and honestly i looking at it i wasn't really sure if i was going to be into it i knew that the colors in the shadow palette were really pretty you get 12 shadows very fall-ish winter-esque colors really pretty shimmers and it performed a lot better than i thought it was going to and i just feel like this kind of blew me out of the water and for the price especially if you can get your hands on this i believe it is still available at walgreens so i'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a rundown on how i created this look but also give you guys the talk through on what products i liked what products i didn't like and just you know give you guys the pros and cons and everything that you guys need to know without further ado let's stop babbling and let's get on to my la colors radical glow kit review tutorial video. I did prime my lid using my Tape Shape Concealer. Now I'm going in with the lightest shade in the palette just to help set that concealer. It's gonna brighten up the lids, make us look more awake, but also helps to ensure the other shadows that we're going to apply on top blend a little bit easier and grab the dark brown shade that is in there. And I'm just gonna put this into the crease. I'm using a pencil brush because you guys know, I always talk about how my eyes are a little bit small. So I do like to work with smaller brushes just to perfect the eye and I do go slow, I do work in layers, and the shadow was kind of chalky, it is not the most pigmented shadow, which I can't, I'm not gonna say that I don't like it, I thought it worked really nicely, I think it is user friendly, but you're gonna have to dip back and forth and back and forth, as you're gonna see me do several times in this video, simply because these shadows are not so pigmented, like I said, so you need to build upon the shade. Now I'm going in with a clean blending brush just to blend that out, make those lines look a little bit softer. They kind of blend a little bit too much. If I go in too hard, they will kind of blend into nothing, but if you go in with a light hand, you'll get a good, nice effect. Now I'm going in with the black on the outer third of the eye just because I really want that outer third to be more pigmented than it is. Again, the shadow is not the most pigmented, so you're going to need to work in layers. So I'm using that black over that brown just to give that outer corner a little bit more depth and to lift the face, giving myself that feline effect that I like. I did just use my finger to help smudge out some of that black because I thought that it was traveling a little bit too high. And as you can see, the shadow came off pretty easily by doing that. Now I'm just going in and blending, blending, blending. Now I'm going to hop into this beautiful green iridescent shade and I'm going to place that right where that black ends and right where it meets my skin. I have to say this shadow was pretty pigmented in comparison to 90% of the shadows in this palette. This might be the most pigmented shadow that I worked with. So again, I'm just doing that on the other eye and I'm applying this in stamping motions. I found that that gives, you know, the iridescence the best chance to really stand out. Blending, blending, blending. And now I'm hopping into a shimmery shade and I'm going to pop that right where that green meets my skin. Again, kind of just working in stripey layers but making sure to blend them so it doesn't look like, you know, my lids look like a zebra, you know, stripe, no. So I'm just blending it with my finger. Now I'm hopping into that yellow. I wanted it to be a little bit more pigmented than it was, so I am gonna go ahead and spray my brush, reapply that yellow. Now I'm gonna hop into some orangey shade and I'm gonna apply that right between the yellow and that other shimmer shade that I applied. Gonna go ahead and blend that out like I've been doing. And now I'm just assessing and I decided that that shimmer in the middle kind of lost its touch. So I am reapplying. Again, I really had to work in layers using the shadow. It's not the most pigmented, but I kind of like a shadow that's not super pigmented. Going in with this orange, I placed that in the crease using that same pencil brush that we used in the very beginning, just because I felt like this look needed a little bit of warmth and a vibrancy. So I'm giving a little bit more vibrancy and I am very lightly blending that because again, I don't want to take away from the pigments on my actual lid, just want to blend out that crease. 
Now I'm going in with the black again on the outer third of the eye just because I really want this to be dark and it's not really being as dark as I want it to be, which was kind of frustrating. But again, I like an eyeshadow that you need to work with a little bit more so than a shadow where you just pump up the pigment by just throwing on one layer because for me I do have small eyes and you can really see when my lids have too much shadow on them. So for me this works but if you're someone that likes a more pigmented shadow this might not be for you. Brightest shade that has a little bit of yellow in it. I'm just going to pop that underneath the brow bone just to give a little bit more life to the eyes make them look a little bit more awake. I'm just assessing, checking, you know getting my thoughts together as to what I think about this eyeshadow. And while I'm just finessing, I'm just going to say, again, not the most pigmented. These shadows are a little bit chalky. If you're willing to put in the effort to perfect your lids, like I'm clearly doing right now, then this is definitely a palette that you will like. I think the colors are really pretty, but again, you got to work for it. Now I'm going to go in with the eyeliner. This is a coal pencil liner, and I am just dotting this along my lashes on the lower lash line just to make it look like I have more lashes than I do. You guys know I like to do this trick. And now I'm going to pull my skin a little bit tighter as I create a really, really thin line up top. This is not the most pigmented liner. This is a running theme in this bundle, not so pigmented. It's a really, really faint black and it's not super creamy. It is a hard pencil. But the good thing about this is that you can get this to a really, really nice tip, which came in handy right here. And I applied my little wing, not the most pigmented black wing, but damn, that pencil was so sharp that it was the easiest thing to draw a wing with. It was bananas. It really, really shocked me. Like, look how fast that is. Oh my God, shocking. So I ended up really liking this liner. If you watch my channel, you will notice that I do a lot of wings with an eyeshadow. So this kind of gives that same effect. It kind of gives like an eyeshadow wing effect minus the eyeshadow. You're just legit using a pencil, which is even easier to do. So now I'm going to hop into the mascara. This wand scared the crap out of me. Wasn't so sure about it, but oh my Lord, this mascara is amazing. I like a wispy elongated lash. It doesn't give the most volume. You can see I'm shocked. Shocked by the mascara. What you did not see in here was that I did curl my lashes with my Tweezerman eyelash curler which I always do. While they look really amazing right now they did fall. They did not hold the curl but the length was really beautiful and initially I really loved what this mascara did. So overall I would give this mascara and this liner a plus. Now I just need to smoke out the lower lash line. I felt like I needed some shadow on the bottom. So I'm going in with that brown really smudging that with a pencil brush. And now I'm gonna go in with that orange just to give some warmth underneath the eyes as well, smoking that out, further smoking out that lower lash line, making it delicious. And I'm gonna hop in with that green and put it in the inner corner just because I really like the effect that it gives and I'm pulling it down a little bit underneath the eye because I like how that kind of gives like a grungy, I don't care, I'm not really trying look when clearly we put the most effort into this as possible. Taking the lightest shade, going to add that to the inner corner just because, you know, I want the inner corner to be a little bit brighter, a little less yellowy. Take the mascara and apply it to my lower lash lines. This is great for my lower lashes, great for the lower lashes. It separates them really nicely, just like it did to the top lash, but the lower lashes don't need to hold a curl, um, whereas the top ones do. And then I did want to go in and apply another layer of mascara just to see if this was a kind of mascara that you can build upon itself, which it was, didn't flake everywhere. Now I'm going in with the blush. This really, really pretty shade. I think it complemented the eyeshadow colors perfectly. I like a nude-ish peachy blush. I think it just gives a nice natural flush to the skin. I'm just applying this to the apples of my cheeks and back just to lift the face. Really love it. Gave a really nice color. Now I'm adding more liner to the lash line, tight line in the eyes. And this did not stay in the lash line very long. If you're looking for a liner that's going to stay in your waterline, I would use the Stila Smudge Kajal. Those eyeliners will stay put for hours and hours and hours. This one kind of moved, especially since I have kind of watery eyes. You know, I tear up a lot, so it didn't really stay that long. Now moving on to the lipstick. I was pleasantly shocked by this. No, this is not really the color that I would initially go for. I would have paired this look with more of a nude, like a peachy nude. I'm not really a berry girl, but this was really nice. It felt really comfortable on the lips and I did go in using a tool simply because I was scared that this would move and budge and travel through the fine lines around my mouth. Overall, I have to say this lipstick stayed really, really nice. It did not move as much as I thought it would. I'm kind of shocked. A lot of the products I really wasn't into at first, but then upon the continuation of using them, I really did love them, especially the liner. So I would have to say, if you're gonna go out and you're gonna venture and try to find this, buy this online, it is definitely worth the price. I feel like this is a really great drugstore set. The products perform really well. I just think that maybe you need to 
finesse and play with them a little bit more. The only thing is, is like I can see that the pigments are kind of fading. We're gonna see how this lasts because I am gonna wear this to dinner and I'm gonna come back and do some other shots of this, but really happy with what this looks like right now. This is me after dinner. So I've been wearing this makeup for about five hours now. The shadows look really nice. I think they blended really well together. The shimmers did kind of fade a little bit. As you can see, my lashes look really long and nice. They didn't really hold a curl though. However, this is a great mascara. It didn't flake on me, which if a mascara flakes and I get little black bits all over my eyes, that's kind of like the end of it for me. So I would highly recommend the shadow and the mascara. The liner, as you can see, it's still kind of in my waterline. It's not super in my waterline. And you can see the lips didn't really travel that much. They're not as perfectly lined, but that is because I went out to dinner. I was eating and drinking. Liner was really fun to work with. I do like it. If you're someone that likes a faint liner, not so bold and in your face, then you will like this liner. However, if you are someone like me that has a lot of makeup, you're not missing out on anything. So if you're looking for something that is astonishing, I'm gonna blow you out of the water, something that you don't have, you probably already have it. So those are my final thoughts on this palette. Just a quick and friendly reminder to subscribe if you have not done so. Also click that bell button this way you get a notification every time I'm uploading a video here on my channel. As always, leave me some love in the comments. Let me know if you have any questions about these specific products. If you have a question about a technique that I did within the video, anything you guys want to talk about. I had a great time as always. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will see you in my next one. Bye finders. Mwah.